In this video, I'm going to show you how to evaluate these five integrals that came out in the MIT Integration B in January 2020. Let's get started. First problem, let's evaluate this definite integral. So let's try u substitution. So let u be equal to arc sine x. And if this is our u, then this means that sine of u will be equal to x. And this will give us differentiating. So you'll get here cosine u du equal to dx. Therefore, we can write our integral as uh, integral of arc sine x, so that is u. And then our dx is uh, cosine u du. And then over x cubed, which is equal to the cube of sine u. And the limits of integration will be arc sine of 1 over square root of 2, so that is equal to pi over 4. And arc sine of 1, so that is just equal to pi over 2. Now, we can write the integrand as uh, u times, in this case, so let me write this one, pi over 4 to pi over 2. So this is just equal to u times uh, cosine u over sine u is actually cotangent u. And then the remaining sine squared u in the denominator. So 1 over sine squared u, we can write that down as a cosecant squared u. Now, let's try to use integration by parts to evaluate this one. When you're using integration by parts, one of the technique is to choose the dv as the most complicated part of your integrand that can be integrated. And in this case, actually, we can choose this as our dv. And we can easily evaluate this by like u substitution. So if we choose this as our dv, and in this case, this is our, let's say, mu. So this is already in the form integral of uh, mu dv. So our mu is equal to u, and then dv is equal to cotangent u cosecant squared u du. So our d mu is equal to du. Now, how do we find the v in this case? Just uh, think of this as your z here. And if that is our z, then this is actually just the negative of uh, dz. And therefore, our v in this case is just equal to negative z squared over 2. So that is equal to negative cotangent squared u all over 2. So by integration by parts, we have here mu v, which is equal to negative u over 2 cotangent squared u. And then, of course, this is a definite integral. So we evaluate this from pi over 4 to pi over 2 minus the integral of v d mu. So that is equal to negative 1 half cotangent squared u du. And again, this is just from pi over 4 to pi over 2. Now we can easily evaluate this integral because this is just equal to a cosecant squared du and then minus 1. Therefore, this is just equal to, so when we plug in pi over 2 there, so we have here negative uh, pi over 4 and then times cotangent of pi over 2, so that is equal to 0. Okay, And then minus minus, so that will be plus uh, pi over 8. And then cotangent of pi over 4, so that is 1. So square of 1 is just 1. Now, integral of cosecant squared u is just equal to negative cotangent u. So that is just negative 1 half of uh, cotangent u. And here we have negative 1 half du. So the integral of that one will be negative 1 half u. And then we evaluate this from uh, pi over 4 to pi over 2. So we can just uh, put a grouping symbol here and then put a sum. So this is equal to uh, pi over 8 and then plus negative 1 half times cotangent of pi over 2. Cotangent of pi over 2 is 0, so that is 0. And then minus 1 half times pi over 2, so that is pi over 4. And then minus cotangent of pi over 4 is just 1, so that is minus 1 half. And then minus uh, pi over 8. So now uh, this one here, so pi over 8 and then plus pi over 8, so that is equal to pi over 4 and then minus pi over 4, so that will be equal to 0. So this uh, cancels out. Okay. So therefore, this is just equal to 
positive one half. Next integral. For this integral, we can also use uh, u substitution. So if we let uh, u to be equal to uh, cosine x, then our du, so u is equal to uh, cosine x, then our du is just equal to negative sine x uh, dx. And how do we write the sine 2x? So using double angle identity, this is just equal to 2 sine x cosine x. And therefore, we can write this sine x and then dx as negative du. So this is just negative du. And cosine x is just equal to u. Therefore, we can write our integral as integral of uh, u times cosine u and then times negative 2 du. So that is times negative 2 du. And what are the limits of integration? When x is equal to 0, then cosine of 0 is 1. And when x, x is equal to pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And we can write this down as interchanging the limits of integration. So this is just 0 to 1 of 2u cosine u du. So I think you know already how to evaluate this one. So we just use here integration by parts. So let's use a di method, tabular method. So we have here our 2u and then this is our cosine u. So this is 2 and this is sine u and 0 and then negative uh, cosine u and then we take the plus minus of the product so therefore this is just uh, equal to 2u sine u and then plus uh, 2 cosine u evaluated from 0 to 1 okay so this uh, will give us uh, uh, 2 times sine of 1 and then plus uh, 2 cosine of 1 minus when u is equal to 0, so we have here 0 plus 2. So therefore, our final answer is 2 sine 1 plus 2 cosine of 1 and then minus 2. Next problem. If you look at this function here, so this is an add function and sine is also an add function. So this integrand here is an add function. So if the limits of integration were from negative pi to pi, then for sure this is equal to 0. But it seems that uh, the integral also from 0 to 2 pi is uh, also equal to 0. And we can easily check that one by changing the limits of uh, integration. So if we change the limits of integration from a negative uh, pi to pi, this means that we need the substitution u equal to x minus pi. And now we can write our integrand as uh, sine of uh, sine of uh, x is equal to u plus pi. So that is uh, u plus pi. And then minus uh, u plus pi. And then dx is just equal to du. Now we're going to use the property of the sine function, which is uh, sine of theta plus or minus pi is equal to negative sine of theta. And this is clear from the graph of the sine function. So therefore, using that property, we can write this down as negative sine of u. And then we have here minus u and then minus pi. Now, using that property again, if we think of this expression here, minus sine u minus u as our angle theta, then that is in the form sine of theta minus pi. So therefore, using this uh, property again, we can uh, write this down as uh, sine negative sine of negative sine u minus u. And clearly, this is an add function. Well, we can still write this if you want as uh, sine of uh, sine of u and then plus u. And this is add. This is an add function. So this one here, it is an add function. So because this is an add function, then therefore the value of this integral is just equal to 0. Next, let's evaluate this uh, integral. So for this integral, again, we can also do uh, u substitution here. So we can just let u to be this uh, denominator. So if your u is equal to that summation from k equals 0 to 2019 of uh, x to the k, 
Then our du, so that is derivative, okay, let's compute for the derivative of u with respect to x. So it is only summation from k equals 0 to 2019 and then kx to k minus 1. So just take the derivative term by term. And since uh, this is just equal to 0, when k is equal to 0, so we can start our summation from k equals 1. So this is to 2019 and then kx to the k minus 1. Now we can change uh, the index here. So instead of starting uh, at k equals 1, we can start uh, at k equals 0. So that is uh, k equals 0, just changing this one, this k here by uh, k plus 1, so that you'll get here from k equals 0. And you have here k plus 1, x to the k plus 1 minus 1, so that is raised to k. And then as you can see here, when k is equal to 2019, then that means that the value of k here for this to be 2019, so that is 2018. So that is up to 2018. So we can write this uh, expression here as uh, du. Therefore, we can write our integral as uh, ln of absolute value of x minus 1. And then that is plus integral of du over u. Which is uh, equal to ln of absolute value of x minus 1 and then plus ln of that uh, summation, absolute value of u. And our u is uh, summation from k equals 0 to 2019 and then uh, x to k. And then this is plus c. Now, if we look at uh, this one here, this uh, summation here, this is just equal to 1 plus x plus uh, x squared plus and so on. x raised to 2019. So this is just a geometric series, and the sum of this is just equal to 1 minus x raised to 2020 all over 1 minus x. Therefore, we get ln of absolute value of x minus 1 plus ln of this quotient here. So we can use property of ln. So this is just ln of absolute value of 1 minus x raised to 2020, and then minus ln of 1 minus x, and then plus c. But of course, uh, these uh, two are the same, so we can cancel that one. And this is our final answer, this plus c. Last problem, let's evaluate this uh, integral. So here we can make this uh, substitution. We let u to be equal to tangent x. Then our du is just uh, equal to secant squared x dx. And our secant squared x can be written as uh, 1 plus uh, tangent squared x and then dx, which is equal to 1 plus uh, u squared times uh, dx. Therefore, we can write our integral as uh, integral of 1 over u raised to square root of uh, 2020, and then plus 1 times dx, which is equal to du over u squared plus 1. And what are the limits of integration? So tangent of 0, so that is equal to 0. And then tangent of pi over 2, so as we approach pi over 2 from the left, so that goes to infinity. So we have this uh, integral here. Now, the trick in evaluating this uh, integral is uh, making the following substitution. So what is that substitution? You make this substitution u equal to 1 over v. So if u is equal to 1 over v, your du will be equal to negative 1 over v squared dv. Using this uh, substitution, we can write this expression here as 1 over, you have here 1 over v raised to square root of uh, 2020. And then that is uh, plus 1 and then times 1 over 1 over v squared and then plus 1. And then your du is uh, negative 1 over v squared dv. So what are the limits of integration here? Since uh, v is just equal to 1 over u, so as u approaches 0 from the right, so v will go to uh, infinity. And then uh, as u approaches infinity, v will approach uh, 0. Now simplifying this uh, complex fraction, we get the uh, integral from infinity to 0 of, you have here, v raised to square root of uh, 2020. And then all over 1 plus v raised to square root of 2020. And then times negative of 1 over v squared plus 1 dv. And we can remove the negative sign here. 
and just uh, change the limits of uh, integration. So let's uh, do that one. So let's remove this and let's change the limits of integration to zero to infinity. And now if we change this V here to U, okay, what we get is uh, the following. So let's change the variable V here to U. So you'll get here U raised to uh, Q raised to the square root of 2020 20 over 1 plus U raised to 2020 20 and then times 1 over U squared plus 1 and then DU. And if we let this uh, integral here to be I, to be equal to I, of course, since these uh, two integrals are the same, so this integral is also equal to I. And by adding these two integrals, we'll get the following, which is uh, 2I equal to integral from 0 to infinity of what? 1 plus u raised to square root of 2020 20, all over 1 plus u square root of 2020 20, and then times 1 over u squared plus 1 du. Okay? But this is just equal to 1. So we cancel that one, which is equal to 1. And we can easily evaluate this now. So this is just equal to tangent inverse u evaluated from 0 to infinity. So as u goes to infinity, so tangent inverse will approach pi over 2. And then tangent inverse of 0 is just equal to 0. So this is equal to pi over 2. So therefore, the value of our integral, which is the value of i, is equal to half of pi over 2. So that is pi over 4.